So today in the shop, we have a, a relatively uh, cold day to work. I've got the quartz heater out, and believe me when I tell you, it is cold. It's cold and damp out in that garage. But we're going to try to replace the FCR fuel pump. While we have it all apart, I'd like to put a set of plugs in it, refresh it, get it ready for the, uh, the upcoming winter riding season. I haven't ridden it in three months, so it may need a, a little TLC along the way. I don't know. But hopefully by the end of the day, it'll be ready for a test ride. And you never know, with these old bikes, every day there's a surprise behind every cloud. So this is the first day of the year that it's genuinely too cold to ride. It's below freezing. We have patches of ice even in the driveway. The real feel is 21. This would be a great day to work on motorcycles. Now, I've saved the job of working on this bike for... A lot of reasons is I want to have a dedicated day and I which I have right now I don't want to be tempted to at two three hours from now oh it warmed up and I want to go for a ride and I miss a riding day I basically have the whole day to get this bike the maintenance that's due on the bike now the bike has 34,000 miles 34,200 I've had it since it had about 8,000 so I put a lot of miles on this bike, and I really have no regrets about it. It was a Ferrari bike, it was a track bike, it was a street bike, it was a fun bike. I customized it, I did a lot of polishing and stuff. But it's it's been one of the bikes that I, I really have enjoyed, this bike. It's from an era when the bikes had more power than handling, and there were other quirky, and, and this bike has all of them. It's got a flat spot around 3, 3500. It reminds me of that time. So for me, it's a really, a really good part of my collection that I want to maintain. Now, th today is going to be the day I got to maintain it. I wanted to make sure for the people that have not followed the channel for year after year, and, and if you're a new subscriber or a new uh, viewer, great. But this bike, it's because of this bike. Last year, Chris had gotten me the R6 muffler. I went out for a test ride. Blazing hot day, put a hundred miles on the bike, you know, going through the gears the whole time. Coming back, I got about five miles from the house, and right on a bridge on Route 3, in fact, and the bike just went, mm, just, just like you turned the key off. Well, the bike started, it had a good battery, it had everything going for it, and I want to share this story, because otherwise it doesn't make sense what we're doing today. And I called Luciano. He didn't know the local area here, so Karen went with him. We picked up the bike with the trailer, and thank you, Luciano. And when we got back into the car, it was so hot. I remember how hot it was, and I had all my gear on and everything. And Karen turned around and said, right in front of Luciano, she says, Wendy, your birthday's next week. Why don't you go buy a new bike for your birthday? Then you won't break down. Well, you know what? That's how I got the MT-09. And when I got the MT-09, what happened is I put almost 5,000 miles on it. Oh, and I've kind of neglected all my other children in this collection. So today I'm not going to neglect them. I think, but I'm not sure it's the fuel pump. I already have a fuel pump. And while I have it kind of apart here, there's other maintenance I want to do. And for this particular bike now, I like to, every time I take the whole bike apart, because getting the spark plugs out of this bike is a big, big job. So I want to make it as easy on myself as possible. While I have it apart, I'll put a set of plugs in. I have a brand new set. And we used to do that on track day. Anytime we'd have a track day, I'd put a new set of plugs in because I didn't want to change them at the track when one goes bad. And this bike, to keep it on the razor edge, mm, I, I put a lot of plugs in this bike. And, uh, and a couple of reasons, it runs very rich. I noted jetting on it. It's got some kind of a jet kit in it that when I bought it. And I have three sets of, of carburetors, but none of them are stock. So I know I could make that better if I had the patience to sit around with a bunch of jets and jet kits and everything. But basically, the bike ran good enough that I enjoyed riding it. And so the, the, the answer for me was ride the wheels off it. And today is maintenance day. I'm going to go get ready, go have a cup of coffee, feed the birds, and, and stop talking and start working. So here's the current. It's 30 degrees. The real feel is 21. And we're going to be working in this all day long. Okay, so today Karen has some new kitchen tools. We always like these kitchen tools. 
And what are we going to use these for? She's making red velvet cookies with white chocolate chips. How are they doing? Wow, nice. That's not to be too big. Oh, I'm getting hungry already. What do you think? Is that too big? No, the bigger the better. There's no such thing as too big. So the next step is to roll them in sparkly sugar. Special confectioner's sugar. <laughs> Oh my Not god. Not confectioner's sugar. Sparkle, sparkling sugar. Sparkling sugar. Who knew? I thought it was a can of Bondo. So little by little we're getting our house ready for Christmas. Getting in the Christmas spirit. And boy oh boy. This time of year to smell the cookies. Just wonderful. And one of the things we really enjoy sharing this with our friends and through the magic of YouTube videos we are able to do just that. And we wish your family a very Merry Christmas also. Even though it's not Christmas yet. Are they ready for a taste test, I see. I know, I know just the person to do it, too. And this is the final, the final test. That is the final test. <laughs> Happy holidays. And because of that breakdown that day, and we hope that it's just the fuel pump that's bad, that would make sense. And FZR has the fuel lower than the carburetors. But because of that breakdown, Karen graciously bought me this bike. And again, thank you. I have enjoyed this. Got almost 5,000 miles on it. And I couldn't be happier with that choice of bike. Because in my collection, I try to have a new bike every 10 years or so. Well, it was actually, it was 11 years. Now, if I live another 10 years, I only have to live 9 more years because it's already, <laughs> it's 11 years. Well, we'll, we'll kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, got a new fuel pump, brand new plugs, time to start taking the bike apart. So step one is to get the bike up on the stand. I like to work on a bike while it's steady like this, just makes it a little bit easier. So one of the things that makes working in this temperature out here at least bearable is my quartz heater. And a quartz heater does not heat air, it heats things. So. When you stand next to it, it just goes right through you. And it's, to me, it's worth every penny. Until my hands actually warm up, and by the way, I've had this thing about 20 years, and boy, is it great. And one thing that's good about this bike, it does come apart relatively simply and easily. And we've had to do it so many times, I've had to do it so many times, that we've done a lot of things to it, a lot of mods. And the highlight of this bike is really funny. The day I finished my 900 hour restoration, I dumped the bike. <laughs> you can't make that stuff up. Now of course as I'm taking this apart, I'm laying all the parts out in the sequence I take them out and leaving out in sequence all the tools that I use to do this job. So when I go to put it back, I just start at the other end of the row and it'll go back, hopefully. And as I get older, that seems to be a better and better tip. And every time I disassemble something, I'll just put it in this row. And again, I, that's, that's a good useful tip. And I always leave out on my, my uh, bench anything, any tools that I need to put the bike back together. It just makes it a little bit easier. It's a good tip. Now, one of the things I always did with this bike was zip tie on the little pieces that the little the little tang that holds the seat from coming off because I was always paranoid that during track day one of the seat would come off. Now we have a relatively new battery tender lithium ion battery in this bike. Now, one of the things that I'm glad of is when it ran out of gas, and it ran out of gas because the fuel pump can't pump up to the carburetors, let's hope that's the case. And when I tested the, the, the circuit, what should happen is when you turn the key on, and you should hear five seconds, the fuel pump, well, we don't hear anything. So that led me to believe, and Luciano confirmed my diagnosis that the fuel pump was bad. So... And this is, it's about five years old, and it's an aftermarket one. It's not a real Yamaha one, so they're about 30 bucks. So it's been, I've got a brand new one, and now I've got to take this off, break the fuel line. And this bike does not have a fuel reserve that works. I don't know why. I never bothered with it. I just ride 100 miles and put gas in it. But taking a tank off 
I've done it so many times and every time you do it, it's a pain. The reason some of this maintenance takes longer than it should is I try to Loctite everything from, of course we did use this bike for, as a track bike for many years. Um, get the uh, a heat gun or hair dryer on, some of the overflow tubes, in fact this one is a rock, holy mackerel. And it's always a big help if you don't have a full tank of gas. Now, I don't know how much this has, but it would be nice if right now it only had about a gallon in it. Now, when we first got the bike, Luciano had the idea, and, and I thought it was a good one because we were doing regular track days, but to get a quick disconnect on a fuel line, which right now is going to be a big advantage. And I need to get this up in the air. And what I need right now is to turn my fingers into little baby fingers to get down in there. Oh, I, rem I remember how much fun it is to get down you got that quick disconnect. And when it's cold, your fingers could, could crack. Now, the way I found to making this easier is it's got this little cotter pin holding this pin. And I don't take that off till I'm ready to actually pull a tank. Otherwise, the tank starts rattling around and rolling around. And it just makes it easier to do that right at the last minute before you pull a tank. Got a quick disconnect fuel line in cold weather. Believe me, that's hard to do. I'm going to get the heat gun or a hair dryer and just warm everything up to the touch because it's just, I'm afraid of always in really cold weather cracking plastic or doing some damage that I don't really want to do. But that, that quick disconnect fuel line has paid for itself over and over again. And today it's going to pay. And this bike does not have a fuel reserve, so it's supposed to, but in reality it doesn't. Now another great tip for FZR owners, when we first got this bike, the bike comes with an EXUP valve and a servo. And I had disconnected the servo thinking, well, what do I need a servo for if I don't have an EXUP valve? When you disconnect the servo, the bike won't rev over 4,000 RPM. And it took me a while to figure it out. We finally figured it out and that, that servo has to be connected. And you can see when you give it the gas, it, the servo will move but it's not hooked to anything. But if you disconnect it, you, you're gonna make yourself crazy. And that is a really good tip if you're an FCR guy. The last thing is to pull this pin once the cotter pin's off, and now the tank is free and ready to take off the motorcycle. Now it's lucky for us, it doesn't feel like it's got too much fuel in it. I think we're good to go here, okay. Now whenever I have this bike apart, I think of how many hours this restoration took. It was about 900 hours and every single minute of it, I think, is on our channel. On previous FCR videos. So once you have the tank off, you can very easily see why. The downdraft carburetors that are part of this bike. The fuel is in a lower part of the tank. The fuel is actually down low. It's one of the reasons the bike has a pretty low center of gravity. I guess that was the great engineering of the time. But, and a fuel line, a quick disconnect fuel line. Once you warm it up, easy peasy. We still have the wiring for the reserve, but it doesn't work, and I have no idea why. I don't need to know. And we've got a rock hard overflow line we gotta deal with. But right now, what that does, it exposes, there's the old fuel pump. Now, because this is an aftermarket fuel pump, we've had, we just have it in there not in the original mount, but in, actually it's in zip ties, so I can pull this out. And it actually worked good for five years, so I really don't feel like I got, got ripped off. And at the time when I originally replaced this, the, the original Yamaha one was like ten times the price. So I took a chance, I got five years of service, and I guess I should quit while I'm ahead. So with the zip ties off, there's the fuel pump. We've got it marked, and I've got two wires going to it. I'm going to have to splice these wires, I can see, and that's what I had to do with the other one. So the neck, I don't want to get that in the way. And I've got, from this point on, I've got to get just take the fuel hoses off, warm them up with a hair dryer, get the hoses off, and disconnect the wires. And I'll, then I can test the fuel pump off the motorcycle. So we have the old fuel pump off, pretty pretty simple thing to figure it out. It's marked which is in, which is out. The only thing we may have, a, and this is a, I think an overflow, but I never even used it, never even connected it. 
it has the mark of which one is plus and which is minus so I may want to and I don't know when I take this apart this is the problem with all aftermarket things they're going to not have the right part on it but it's not something we can't deal with so let's see what part they have on here and we just have to account which is in which is out and it won't matter that one tube is bent we have all brand new fuel line going on here let's see if these are the same because I want to use the one that's attached to the motorcycle so what I'm going to do is cut this one off and splice this end in other words switch the two ends on this Rel relatively simple job to do not a big deal but so the fuel pumps are the same so you would think it's our lucky day and it would just fit right on there and with zip ties again we're going to find out now dimensionally they're almost exactly the same but this overflow and I guess that's the overflow there or it's it's something I'm not I'm not technical enough to know what the, the, that's supposed to do but it ran five years without the, nothing being on there so but this is the issue that I have to deal with the ends I've got to switch ends they're not interchangeable and I've got to figure out which one is plus and which is minus this one is marked of course lucky for us this one isn't <laughs> So the first thing I have is my trusty, this is from 2009, this battery is the original battery that came with the R1. I charge it every two months and it's, it's lasted, what, 11 years as a test thing, but I don't use it. So now I want to hook up, I know this is positive. I want to see if, just confirm that we have a defective pump here. And I've got nothing coming out of the pump, nothing. what that's telling me is we have a dead pump. That definitely was the, the problem. So on the new pump, I've got to, and they've marked which one is positive here. I hope they're right. <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. We're not sure we're going to ever use that again, but now I can skin back the wires. And Well, you know what I should do? If I was smart, I'd test, test this pump before I... <laughs> Famous last word here. Let's give it a test. I hate electricity. Everybody that ever worked with me knows how much I hate electricity. But sometimes you just have to bite the bullet here. There you go. That's a good pump. And that's positive if we confirmed it. Good. Take the wires off for now so I don't set the house on fire. Now it's a question of stripping this down. And I got my great little heat shrink tubes. These are just, they got the, the, um, shrink tubing right on top of them they make a beautiful connection now if you never used these connectors before i used to solder everything and boy was it a lot of work these connectors and they're from harbor freight i don't even have to say that everybody would know that these make a wiring a job like this so easy not a problem at all and when i'm done with this just taking a heat gun and heat shrinking that tubing and you've got a, I think, the best job possible. And now once I have those shrunk down and I know I've got a good connection and I've got my heavy duty sleeve that goes right over the top of everything and this is really extra protection. Again, this was available at Harbor Freight. All of this stuff is. And that'll shrink down on the two of them. Give it a little extra protection. And I think what would be a smart thing to do here, maybe I'm not the smartest guy in the world, after I burn myself, I figure it out. But anything I can do to protect these wires, because again, it reinforces in my mind that an FCR with a fuel pump that doesn't work, once that fuel level drops, and that's exactly what happens, you're, for all purposes, you're not, you're not going to get the bike started. Now, a good thing to remember, and I don't know if this is true, if I was able to get to a gas station and fill it up with gas, that some of that gas wouldn't have been above, I don't know that. So I better not, uh, when I don't know something, I'm always happy to admit I don't know it. Oh, that makes a nice, a nice, a nice solid joint there. That's really good. Yeah, Man, that's ready to install now.
So we're basically at the midpoint of this job because from now on we just got to snap everything together, put some good hose clamps on those hoses. I want new, I've got brand new fuel line, I want brand new hose clamps too. Now when I bought all this fuel line, this one, one came with a whole bunch of hose clamps. I hope these are going to be, well, maybe even if they're not, I have hose clamps. But it's nice when, uh, when you have extras. And always having nice new ones is always nice. Just a nice little touch and have a nice soft fuel line, not that rock stuff. Well, it turns out those are not the right size. Those are for the quarter inch. I hope, yeah, I do have some. Uh, it always pays to save everything, boy. So we got all the nice new clamps on there, new fuel line. All that's left is to test this. We have the replacement wire. And what I'll do is I just want to hear that buzz. There it is. And of course, it's no point leaving it running. We don't have any fuel hooked up there. Okay, so the last thing, and then I'm going to go take a coffee break. Sort these wires out and get some new hose clamps holding that down in there where the old one was and once those hose clamps are tightened we can go for a coffee break alright as soon as we get back from coffee it'll be time to take the air filter off and the, the, we'll save the hardest part of this job for last get the plugs out which is a real job on this bike oh it's good to be out of that garage I'm telling you Look at what I got. I come in for a surprise and there's more cookies. Ah, more cookies. Holy mackerel. I think I'll have one. I see the birds are anxious to help with today's little maintenance. What? You're not? So now that we had a really good coffee break, about 16 cookies. <laughs> Time to get back out to the tundra. Oh, it isn't any warmer than it was this morning. Well, it's funny, when the fish are in hibernation, they don't move at all. It's like they're frozen in time. Now, back out here, it really didn't get any warmer. Now, changing the plugs is a pretty labor-intensive thing. we got to pull the F-filter off, among other things. And then there's a bunch of little covers that have to come off. And then we need that special FZR plug tool. But the first thing I do is get the compressor jacked up and blow some compressed air into the the deep recesses where the plugs are because there's always some dust or dirt in there and when you take the plug out I don't want that stuff falling into the engine. Now one thing I did years ago that made this <clears throat> just a little bit easier is all of the screws that hold these these rings and carbs I got a, a whole bunch of these bolts that are allen bolts instead of hex head bolts it just makes this just just ever so little bit easier to pop that off. Now the only thing left is the bolt in the front and then we can take that whole air filter off. Now I always try to use the time I have whenever I take any motorcycle, or I take anything apart. Look around and see if there's any wires that are rubbing and uh, anything that I can make a little bit better. Put a little bushing, rub a bushing in front of it or something. But this bike has been apart many, many, many times. Now you can see we've screwed around with the jetting a lot of times. We, in fact, we got so sick changing pilot jets and everything. that. But in the end, I really just have to live with the fact that I do have a flat spot around 3,500. Now if my late friend uh, Kenny Augustine were still alive, he'd probably be real good at diagnosing and helping it. But in the meantime, it doesn't stop the bike from being fun to ride. That's the whole point. The whole point is you got to just, uh, and, and on a racetrack it doesn't matter really, you're never at 3,000 RPM. But this has been some adventure. When I bought this bike, Luciano will remember because he found it. And actually it was not that far from his house. We went on a snowy day. The guy, <laughs> we got the guy down in price to where he was screaming and yelling and he throwing sneakers at us. But he wanted to get rid of the bike. And it wound up in my collection. And that's the whole key. If you can buy a bike cheap enough and then replace everything, tires, batteries, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And in this case, I did two complete paint jobs, a Ferrari paint job and a, whatever we're going to call this, the, uh, the Kenny Roberts look paint job. <laughs> this bike has been an evil, evil, evil twin. makes this job a little bit of a nuisance for me is I have big hands. If you had little baby hands, I think you could get down in here a lot easier, but to get to the two plugs on either end, it is really, really labor intensive. And that is, 
there's three Phillips screws that have to come out. And the first time you do this, it can be really tricky. See, that's where the plug is, down there. You need a special long wrench because it sits way down into the head. Depending on how easy you want to make this job, removing the coils makes it a little bit easier. Gives you a little more access. It's only a couple of bolts anyway. And I disconnected all the wires so that what we basically have now, I can get this piece out of the way. And that's, that's going to make our job, yeah, not going to make it easy, but it's a lot easier not having this piece in place. Now over the years I bought several tools that are supposed to make this job a lot easier. You know what? None of them do. They're all, they're all difficult. It's just, it's just difficult to get down into the black hole in space. Not impossible, but you got to be so careful. And I've got to make sure I don't get any dust or grease or dirt that's going to fall down. Because if you look at this, this is, this is something. You look at how long those, the spark plug leads, they go down into the engine about oh, nine inches or so. So but this, is an, this is an area where I want to be real careful I don't get any dirt down into the engine. It's an important step before I take any of those plugs out. Make sure there's nothing, nothing dust to lose dirt. Hey, there's a dead mouse in there. Just kidding. Now with all that stuff out of the way, it does make it just a little bit easier, but it's sure not like changing plugs on a GS, that's for sure. Once I catch the plug now, and this is why you need that universal joint inside to get that, that bend, because otherwise, if you have a straight wrench, it's not, it's going to hit the frame. And this, this just gets, those two end plugs do get time consuming to get out. They were loose already, but now let's hope we can get it out. Now let's see if it's our lucky day. Whenever I'm doing this job, and I've done it many times, I always think, is it my lucky day? Not the easiest bike. I guess all modern sport bikes, the R1 is no bargain either. Okay, and here's our plug. And that's the hardest one to get out. The rest of them, that one will be hard too. These, these will be relatively routine out of two middle ones. Now as awkward as it is to get that wrench to bend, if you don't have that bend, you just can't get in there. But, hey, we, we do manage to get it done. Okay, the next one's going to be easier. And, of course, the two middle ones are the easiest ones. And we'll do the rest of these off camera. This, this is part of the job that, uh, well, you got to do it if you want an FCR. Now, anybody who has one of these 20-valve <laughs> engines knows the one characteristic they have that really is unique, and I like it a lot. I, I, no, I'm just making sure I don't have that missing. I really like the fact that on these engines, they get to about 10 grand, and it seems like they have a, like kicking in a four-barrel carburetor. I know Yamaha, that was one of the things when, back in the day when Yamaha used to survey people of what they liked about their FCR, they always said, oh, that... A thing like it gets to 10 grand and it goes crazy. And that, and I know my R1 is exactly the same, so I guess Yamaha is still doing that. I don't know. Anyway, that's the last of the plugs, and we are, oh man, I am so happy that this is done. It's always a challenge working down in a black hole in space. Sometimes it works out not too bad, like today. And sometimes you get away with pushing that part off to the side. And so it's all done now and we're ready to go back. Put the bike back together. Now I want to make sure I haven't, <clears throat> haven't disturbed any of these wires or misplaced them. I want to make sure I've got all of these set the way they're supposed to be. This is not that one. This one goes here. And you can't really interchange. You can't really put them backwards, but if you could, I would. We get these all out in the open as we do have the two different cylinders here. I don't want to screw. Them. Once these are in good, all hooked up, and we're ready to then put the screws in and hold the coils in place. Now I'm always careful to look around when I have something apart. I want to see if any of these wires look like they need. See right here, they're flopping around. I'll put a zip tie over that, not real tight, but just so they don't rub on each other. 
make sure everything's tight and hey, this went pretty well what sort of work I, I usually do on older bikes I'm always aware of how it can make you crazy when wires are just slapping around and rubbing on each other and everything and a couple of zip ties tidies that right up and it, it is under the tank where you're not going to see it until it's too late but everything's the way it should be oh, we are ready baby this, this actually went better than I thought it would all right put the air filter on next Definitely one of the days that I'm going to be very happy to get inside and get out of the tundra here. And he's usually, it's not a problem popping these on. And we tighten the clamps with the Allen bolt that we have. Oh, that'd be nice. Now one thing I'm always kind of careful to do, or hopefully I, that I don't do it often, is leave out any steps. And one of the good steps on this whole motorcycle was to get these Allen bolts instead of the bolts that came with it. And just... Boy, does this make this job a lot easier. Once those Phillips screws get chewed up, it takes a lot of the fun of working on bikes out. Come to the end of this and put this together. I don't want to leave out any steps here. That's in. Now I can hook up all the, the fuel connections under there, and boy, that really went nice. Hooking up the quick disconnect. There we go. Take out the rubber hammer. So on this bitterly cold day, I'm not sure this couldn't have gone any better. You know, it went pretty good. So as I'm buttoning up the last of the parts here, I, I always try to explain to people why I like this bike so much. It's, it's, I don't know what there is. There's something about it. And, and Luciano, thank you when you found this. And I never forget that guy, boy, I think about that a lot. That guy that sold us the bike, he gave, this thing had when we bought it, it had a Harley paint job with flames and skulls and I still somewhere on the video I still have that but it was uh, unbelievable I used paint remover and I took he must have had 50 coats of paint on a bike it was, it, was, it was beyond belief and as I always do at the end of every little job I try to record the maintenance and the mileage now it's definitely been a long day but it's a very rewarding day to know that that's all done and thank you, Chris, for getting me that muffler. That's going to allow me to really get get riding in these populated areas where I've been riding. So we try to post up something every day, every other day, maybe in the winter. And I want to thank the healthcare workers. Thank you guys so much so much for all you've done to keep us safe we love working on these old bikes i love sharing the information and sometimes on a day like today when i'm out in that frozen garage it's good to come inside and get a great hot cup of coffee and some cookies from karen that's the life we share i hope you enjoy sharing it with us and we do love our fcr we love all the bikes in our collection so again i hope you enjoy watching the videos share them with your friends and Keep these old bikes running. It, it is such a challenge. And thank you guys so much for watching.